Okay. Um, I'm going to read this poem. It's called My Love Grows in Winter. I want you guys to stop and take in every word that I read. So if you want, close your eyes. But just take in everything and every word from this poem. Loud. My love for you grows in winter. When the grass turns brown and birds return to their nests. My love for you feeds on shrubs. It, it, it eats the thin leaves of winter. The hills that litter your waist are seen in the sun, on the sun-dried curves and colors of Swazi fields laid bare by the winter winds. I gaze at the darkening meadows. I fear and wonder how your love is. Is it cold like winter, biting my body? Is it making fire in the chill of distance? Do not echo my fear that you call me deserter, heartless one who left in harmony of our life, of our life? Not so. Dear land, I am no deserter. I'm still your own, clinging to you, and claiming your love so scarce in this harmaton of your life. I shall still come to you, even in your battered shape, disfigured by strife in all the in all that came in the new in the new harmaton. I shall come, smelling of fondness and shining of distance. You will have no choice but to forgive my brief desertion. Surely, my love grows in the winter, in winter for my battered homeland. This poem was written by our very own professor, if you guys didn't know. You didn't tell us your name. Christina. It's good to hear someone read my poem. Gives it another meaning. Thank you very much. Hey, good evening. Can I say that again? Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. All right, all right. All right, to me, uh, this is an interesting topic. Uh, reclaiming humanity. Uh, but to reclaim something, you have to know what it is anyway, yeah, in the first place. So, what is it to be human? Uh, to me, being human is able to probably sing, dance around, and talk to people, eat, uh, Professor talked about eating some food, some fufu, uh, eating some natural food, not hamburgers, <laughs> uh, uh, eating some, yeah, some natural food, drinking some fresh water, moving from one area to another, just like Native Americans were just wandering from Asia and coming to this place, just freely enjoying God's creation. To me, that's what it would be, uh, being human, being free, just like those who declared independence in this country wanting that liberty. But when we see what is in the next, uh, in, the, in, uh, in the backyard, Ferguson, Missouri, that is sort of the closest, and every day we can point on something. Uh, looking at what is going on in Syria, Israel and Palestine, uh, the Ebola uh, problems, basically. I'm reminded of what a, a dear friend of ours who just had surgery the other day and is still struggling with it, still trying to come back and, um, and enjoy this world. Uh, one time he gave us a presentation on you cannot be until I am. And I cannot be until you are. Uh, you cannot be who you want to be until I am, uh, basically. 
uh, the people who are fighting, we can look at them as uh, terrorists. And, uh, but always remember, each time you hear of somebody being called a terrorist, another person calls them a freedom fighter. And so until they are, we cannot be. Until they get their freedom, we can't get our freedom, uh, basically. Uh, life is so connected to a very, very large extent. And if we can find a way of resolving our conflict, maybe you young people probably will find a little bit of that, uh, maybe someday, uh, tomorrow, or another day. But until we cannot be free, we cannot enjoy that liberty, basically, until others have a little portion of it. And if they can't get that portion of it, uh -uh. you want to get it alone too, too, either. Until Mexico is developed, we cannot stop people from coming to the United States. Until Africa is, uh, is developed and not exploited, we can't stop them from going to Europe, uh, basically. And if I always tell my American friends, if you want to stop uh, people coming into the United States from all corners of the world, help them be who they can be. Because as long as all the resources are going to the West, or going to Europe, going to America, then all of us basically are going to try to get here. And so, uh, this is a very, very, I, I thank very much the organizers, the two professors of this to bring us together to share a couple of ideas. But always remember that you guys cannot be until I am. Thank you. Oh, I forgot about that. And, and Dan Moesi, originally from Uganda. I am Stephanie Merritt, and I am a women's studies major here at WSU. I'm also very privileged to uh, be a teaching assistant under Dr. Okafor, so I'm having quite an experience. Uh, I wrote a poem, so I will read it. It is titled, Humanity. I had a vision, or maybe it was a fantasy. I came upon a town called Humanity. The town of Humanity had not been tainted by the alien-isms. Classism, racism, sexism, genderism, heterosexism, ableism. There in this township lived many kinds of people. It was a society of many colors, styles, shapes, and sizes yet they were all the same. You see, the citizens of the community were a commonwealth of compassion. Each friendship had true meaning, and despair was the foreigner. There were no beggars in humanity, because all lived in an existence of harmony. In humanity, everyone's middle name was character, and no person had want for shelter. There in humanity, ceasefire had no meaning because every being lived in peace. Children were never abused in humanity. Spousal abuse was an inconceivable concept for the reason that love was at humanity's community center. Animals in humanity were treated by the reality of the goodwill among every person. As I strolled on through humanity, I began to see a dark cloud at the edge of town. I understood it was the isms coming for humanity. I turned and walked the other way, back to humanity. Ooh. Hello. Hello. <laughs> I'm Felicia. And I'm going to read, it's called Shattered Glass. I am like shattered glass, a fragment of what people see, obscure, 
plus pieces, not always together, different puzzles that form together to build a beautiful glass, a mirror that shows me, a fragment of my mother and father to form what you see. I am like shattered glass, pieces that form together to show different sides to the world of the people around me. I am shattered glass, delicate, flawed, beautiful, abstracted, together, a mirror of my mother and father. Mm -hmm. My name is Erica, and I am a student of Ms. Okafor. Um, what I'm about to read you is one of my favorite quotes. I think it's a really important uh, reminder. Um, be soft. Do not let the world make you hard. Do not let the pain make you hate. Do not let the bitterness steal your sweetness. Take pride that even though the rest of the world may, may disagree, you still believe it to be a beautiful place. Mm. Mm. Wow. He loves, his love for me is determined, yet gentle. He protects me from dangers I don't even see. He fights away those demons that try to take me out. You know the ones I'm talking about. Doubt, shame, low esteem, distrust. He wakes me up with a smile and sends them to me all day long. I can always reach up and grab one whenever I need it. He lets me know how much he misses me and loves me. <coughs> 